Right, I think many people would still consider it an open question. Are we, is the Fed, in a rate cutting cycle. We are still listening to the press conference there, but after indicating July's move might only be a one-off adjustment, Jay Powell and the Federal Reserve had just lowered U.S. interest rates for the second time in two months. The federal funds rate was lowered by a quarter point and will now hover somewhere between 1.75 and 2 percent. Now, that's still well above what, of course, President Trump has demanded. He wants rates at zero or negative and says anything else is, in his words, unfair to the economy. He tweeted, Jay Powell and the Federal Reserve fail again. No guts, no sense, no vision. Chairman Powell, meantime, says the Fed will continue to respond to slowing global growth and, of course, that fluctuating uncertainty over trade. If you look at the things we're monitoring, uh, particularly global growth and, and trade developments, global growth has continued to weaken. I think it's weakened since, since uh, it's our last meeting. Uh, trade developments have been up and down and then up, I guess, or back up perhaps uh, over the course of this intermediate period. In any case, they've been quite volatile. So we do see those risks is actually more heightened now. We're going to be watching that carefully. We're also going to be watching the U.S. data quite carefully. And we'll have to make an assessment as we go. Data. There it is again. Our Claire Sebastian is here. I mean, the market reaction has been, you know, rather tepid, I would say. It went down. But what did we get from a chairman who has always vowed to be transparent here? Yeah, Paula, I mean, he, he's trending a really fine balancing act. And this was a meeting, as you know, where the, the federal funds rate itself was really a bit of a, a, a sideshow. People were really looking for what he was going to say in the press conference uh, and what they, the, the market, the policymakers are saying about the future path of interest rates. So here we have some of the projections. And you see what's really interesting. We're now in the range 1.75 to 2 for the federal funds rate. They really see that that is going to stay through 2020. So that is quite significant. The, the policymakers don't really see much in the way of adjustments going forward in order to keep the economy on an even keel. I think that's sort of worth pointing out. But also, there was a really interesting part of this, and that was dissent. We saw dissent on the FOMC committee in both directions. One uh, participant, James Bullard, wanted a bigger cut. Here's the one vote over here. And two of them wanted no change at all. So that is certainly significant. And if you look at the dot plot, which is something that Fed watchers really do focus on, that shows that seven members wanted uh, another cut this year. Seven out of 17, so it's not overwhelming. Five wanted to stay where we are now. And five actually foresee a rise by the end uh, of 2019. So that complicates the matter for Jerome Powell. He's not only facing a market which is really boxing him in in terms of these decisions, but he's also facing splits on the committee. And he said that is a function of where we are now. This is a complex scenario for the Fed to, to manage. And that is why you're seeing such diverse opinion on the committee. Claire, in terms of that dissent, how seriously should we take that? Because it, it obviously, he said it very clearly, I'm going to continue to look at the data and everyone on the Fed is going to continue to look at the data. You know, I think the dissent, it's certainly unusual. He has been seeing Jay Powell so far as Mr. Consensus. It was only really in June that he got his first ever dissent uh, as Fed chair. So it is something that he has to manage. That is part of the Fed chair's role uh, in this job. It's not just his decisions. He has to build consensus on the committee. But, but he said, look, this is a function of, of divergence of opinion. That is healthy. We continue to, to listen to these diverse views. But I do think going forward, it is something to watch because the Fed is also facing pressure from the president, as you pointed out, pressure from inside, pressure from the markets. It really just adds to, to these kind of this confluence of forces on him.